Okay, so we are out at the farm and we are going to harvest. I'm gonna show you how I harvest, um, what I'm harvesting, that sort of thing. So a bit of background here. I harvest what I can process that week or within the next few days. So my process of harvesting this, because there's a lot of produce, is to do it kind of in stages almost. Um, it's fall time, so I'm probably gonna start out in a buddy hug. I'll end up in a tank top, who knows? Uh, but yeah, so let's get into it, see what we can grab out of this garden. This will be my second time harvesting. Improper fertilization of the actual cobs itself will have cobs missing or shorter ends, such as the ones I'm gonna show you here. And the key here is that you want to space them close together, so about a foot apart, and do I do six rows total. So the inner four will produce the best and the outer two will perform poorly. So something to think about. So this year I did do several different kinds of corn. This was not the best corn year. I think it was the combination of the smoke with the um, really cool nights cooler summer is kind of what yielded the poor results of it but this is kind of the center of the patch I guess you could say and they're always the center of the patch is always going to be bigger and fuller than the edges and the reason for this is because the outside isn't able to get pollinated in the same way that the inner uh, ears can because obviously the inner ears are surrounded by plants so they're more likely to get pollinated the other reason is these outer edges that includes the outer edge here along with the outer edge here and if you look the actual crop itself you can kind of see it it's shorter here and then it gets taller into the bed and the reason for this is because the corn itself on the outer edges is stressed. It, it's more exposed to wind, more exposed to the elements, more exposed to Betty, our farm dog. Um, so all of these things combined obviously causes the yields to be poor. But corn is just one of those things. Sorry, you're sitting on a truck bed, so these are really awkward angles. But the, corn is just one of those plants that some years is good, some years is bad. It's similar to that of like tomatoes, for example. Some years are good, some years are bad. That's normal. So always overplant um, some of these, I guess, more exotic plants, for lack of a better term. Um, and prepare to preserve like a year or two in one go. Last year, really good corn harvest, uh, but yeah. And I did do some more unique varieties this year. So I did the tortilla corn. I interplanted everything. Um, I didn't, yeah, I didn't get specific, but check out that color. Is that not beautiful? And the plants, the plants themselves are purple. Purple plants, so cool. So. Is it a full, perfect corn piece? No, <laughs> but that is because these these are not meant to, it's because these are not meant to be grown in Saskatchewan. They're meant to be, they have uh, several much higher growing degree days, um, meaning they ne need a lot more heat and that sort of thing, but it still works, it still works. But I would say the average corn this year, unfortunately, is something in and around this, just kind of like these short and stout corn pieces, but it's fine. We can work with it. We can work with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna harvest as much corn as I can, and I'll show you what I end up grabbing. Betty's going in for the kill. That is gonna be bitter. Is that bitter? Oh, it's not bitter. Shocking. Huh. Okay, so the other thing that we had to harvest today is squash. So there is butternut, spaghetti, and acorn squash in here. Bob is gonna harvest that because he doesn't want to harvest corn. And corn <laughs> is like 
I hate harvesting corn. It makes you so itchy. It's like you get a thousand little paper cuts all over you when you do this. So I will show you how I'm harvesting corn uh, in a large volume like this. So essentially, as I go through, I stomp down the corn because if I'm to stay kind of like in this area, all these little leaves, in particular, these dried out ones, they just make you so itchy. Think of rolling around in grass for hours. That's the experience here. So Bob is going to be the squash harvester. And then we also have potatoes. Anyway, this is where we are at for squash. Turns out I got one butternut. The rest are acorns, nothing else turned out. So one thing I will say about saving this, if you are using these in storage, because squash, winter squash, will store all winter, no questions asked, in cold storage or on your basement floor. One thing you want to do to make sure that they store appropriately is leave the stems on. So this one I broke off, but ideal world, oh my goodness, a lot of these don't have the stems. Okay, my husband doesn't listen when I tell him to pick stuff. You wanna leave these stems on, it will preserve them longer. When the stems are removed, things tend to disintegrate really quickly and you wanna utilize those sooner rather than later. And furthermore, you actually want to freeze them, uh, process them entirely, don't put them in a cold storage. But if you don't, if you wanna do the cold storage route, then you wanna leave those stems on. So next, we're gonna get into potatoes. Now, I planted a lot of potatoes this year. I did harvest a lot so far. I gave away a lot as well, but I still have so many more to do. So the big question is pitchfork or shovel? Which route do you go? I always go shovel, always go shovel guys. So I'm gonna harvest these and then I will show you ultimately how much I got out of this and how I'm going to preserve these over the next couple days. Okay, so I'm gonna freeze. I'm probably not gonna can because it's I'm lazy right now. Um, and I'm going to cure my potatoes, you name it. So if you wanna learn how to cure, freeze, all that stuff, keep watching, because it's coming up next. Okay, so we're officially back home. Several days later, I had two grandmas die in less than a week. Um, so I had two weeks of funerals and hospital visits, you name it. Anyways, the veggies are brought in in between all the hecticness of my life. I did process some of this. So the corn, all I did is I blanch for four minutes in boiling water, pull it out and then sit there with a knife and simply cut the corn off and put it into Ziploc bags. You could also do um, vacuum seal if you wanted to. It's kind of up to you. If you have a better way of processing corn, please let me know. I know you can leave it on the cobs. I have done that in the past. However, I personally find that it is very chewy and it has to be a preferred texture if you go that route. So not ideal. The acorn squash, I'll show you what I did with that. So all this acorn squash, butternut squash, this sort of thing, anything that doesn't have the stem, I need to use very quickly. So my solution is going to be simply either using it or, and or dicing it up and freezing it. If I freeze, again, I'm just going to blanch for two minutes in boiling water, and then I put it onto a cookie tray, and let it freeze and then I put it into Ziploc bags and you can use this for soups, pastas, whatever the case is, dice, shred, whatever. Um, you could also pressure can the squash if you wanted. Honestly, it's still so warm here where we are. Um, and I also was doing Thanksgiving for this weekend so I haven't had time to pressure can. I'm going to freeze a lot this year I think just for my own mental health and just the capacity of what I have to deal with right now. Um, so I'm gonna freeze a lot of that. And then for potatoes, you need to cure them. So I'll insert some footage of what that looks like because it's too dark to film down there. But it's in my basement. You can put it on cardboard, you can put it on the floor, you can put it on a table, whatever the case is. Put your potatoes out in an area, run a fan over them. Um, and all you want is the skins to toughen up and so they don't the skin doesn't rub off because potato skin is very fragile until it does toughen up once it's toughened up it can just go into regular cold storage if you don't want to cure and you just want to blast the process you can pressure can 
I did a video on pressure canning tomatoes. Um, you could also dehydrate, freeze, whatever the case is. So that would be the option for those. Carrots, I put in the fr uh, fridge. I'll show you how I store those. Um, I know it seems unsanitary, but oh, it got really dark there. But I'll show you what this looks like. So this is the carrots. I leave them in dirty. I poke some holes, apparently rip some holes into the bag to allow for some moisture to come out. You can put a, a damp paper towel in here. This will store till spring next year, just like this. You could also do cold storage or fermenting. I need to clean my fridge since I did Thanksgiving yesterday, but that's what you can do. And that's my favorite way to store the carrots. I find it to be the easiest um, personally, just because it's low maintenance. I don't have to wash, I don't have to freeze, I don't have to blanch. I just pop them into the fridge. Um, you could do this in cold storage as well. I find they don't store as well in cold storage unless you have everything on lock in regards to cold storage. So that is why I utilize the fridge when I can. So that's all I have for you guys for storage and food prep. I'm sorry, I'm so, I'm very low energy right now. Um, I've just I've been through it lately. Uh, but yeah, like and subscribe, share this video. Sharing is caring share your harvest i'd be interested to know what your best harvest was this year for you for me it was potatoes um everything else just did so far <laughs> i think it was too much smoke here to be honest i have a video on why uh smoke ultimately does affect plants so go check that out and i will talk to you guys next time bye